Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Rock Hippo Week rolls on here on Big Dave is Cheap as we take a look at Brawl Busters. Brawl Busters is the four-on-four -four multiplayer arena combat game. It's a MOBA in almost the truest sense of the word. It's a multiplayer online battle arena game. So what exactly is the game all about? Well, you and three of your compatriots enter battle against four individuals who have the audacity to wear the opposite color uniform from you. You fight it out in over-the-top extreme cartoon violence, and a good time is had by all. We're going to use this video as a brief introduction to the game. It isn't me meant to make you an expert, because I'm not an expert. So this is just meant as a, as a primer to kind of give you the idea of whether or not you're interested in the game, whether you want to give up that valuable hard drive space to install it, and whether you want to invest your time in playing it. So we're going to talk about uh, a few things. We're going to talk about the currency, how they monetize the game with the shop and the store, as they call it. And uh, we are going to talk about the classes, and finally, we're going to see some actual game action. So first off, let's start out by talking about the classes. Basically, you have two divisions here. You have melee and ranged. We'll start out with the melee crew. You can see this fine beer-bellied gentleman on your screen spinning a football on his finger. Uh, that is an American football, so that is a hand egg, of course. And uh, this is going to be the Blitzer. The Blitzer is my class of choice, as you can see by looking over here. I almost only ever play the Blitzer. Uh, the two minutes that I've played this class was enough for me to realize that I sucked at it and to never play it again. So there you have it. The Blitzer, he is sort of your far end of melee. Kind of tanky, high health, high damage, and uh, as slow as hell. Up next you have the Boxer. He is your fast mover, fast attacker, fragile, lowest HP as you can see clearly printed on your screen. After that, we have our, uh, let's move on to our ranged crew. You have the slugger. Now, I don't have the slugger, so I can't show him to you, but, uh, and I can't speak on him as if I know anything about him. So, uh, yeah, the slugger. Ranged to the extreme. He's got guided attacks, slow movement. He's annoying as hell. A lot of people like to play him, but uh, I generally experience more people playing the Firefighter. The Firefighter is a ranged class that has some interesting defensive capabilities, really gives a hard time to those melee guys who try to come in on him. Really, really cool stuff. And finally, the Rocker. The Rocker is your sort of jack-of-all-trades. He's your Ryu or Ken, I suppose, of this game. And he is uh, he's a pain. Whether you're ranged or uh, melee, he can give you trouble either way. He's got sort of a, a mid-range ranged attack, and he's got some, uh, some good cone damage. Interesting class. I suck with it, but it's interesting indeed. Oh, yeah, I can show you these guys. There's your Boxer. Look at him, with his Meccano gloves there. There's your rocker in all his hipster glory. There's your firefighter. Look at that precious son of a bitch. Oh, lovely. And of course, you got your slugger. Just imagine a guy in an American baseball uniform. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with American baseball, and if some of you guys are from down under and whatnot, uh, just imagine a guy holding a large uh, phallic wooden club uh, with, uh, with the cap on. And that's pretty much pretty much what a slugger is. So that is the class structure. We're going to pop back over to the Blitzer because he's the guy I play. He's the only guy I've invested any of my resources into. Speaking of resources, what a segue. Let's talk about the points. Down here at the bottom, I'll, I'll direct your attention to this word balloon that's popping up. Buster points are your in-game currency. You win buster points for actually playing the game. Rock tokens you will remember from our introduction video. That's the Rock Hippo currency. Rock tokens, I said points, whatever. So, how does that shake out in the store? Let's take a look. To the store. So, here's what I'll tell you. Weapons. Costumes. Those are mainly purchased with BP in-game currency earned through playing the game. I like that. I like the fact that all of your customization, i.e. your costuming, can be purchased with BP, except for, as you will see, special items that come along for promotions or silly items that make your character look silly. 
Now these items that do cost rock tokens have a little bit of a bump. They have a little bit of an advantage. However, regular items can be buffed with upgrades. So talk about upgrades in just a second. Weapons, costumes, purchasable, mainly through in-game points. Big thumbs up on that. Weapons, all they really do is change which of the four attacks you have. You have two options for your right-click attack and two options for your double-click attack. Weapons change which ones you have. Pretty simple. All right. Upgrades are the special thing. They're the ones that cost either or. You can use in-game points. You can use real money. These will allow you to upgrade your costume, your weapons. Nice, simple, easy. So you will notice some of them cost a lot. Apply additional stats, that's a lot. Increase defensive, increase weapon damage, that's not that much. So what you can basically do with these is upgrade the costume and weapon items that you use, that you buy with BP. You can't upgrade the items that you buy with RT. Makes sense. So upgrades cost both weapons and costumes, mainly cost BP. You can do a body switch for real money. It will cost you about 10 bucks to do that permanently because 10,000 rock tokens cost 10 bucks. So it will cost you about 10 bucks to change your body. So if you uh, wanted to be a sexy lady and you forgot and you accidentally made yourself a chubby dude, well, fork over 10 bucks to make the change permanent. Or if you just want to be a sexy lady for a weekend, for a long weekend, there you go. Less than a buck will get you a sexy lady for the weekend. Accessories. Now here is your buying of power. There is a certain amount of power that you can buy here. All of these items cost real money and most of the uh, the better ones buy you power. Mm. It's not a major bump and you do have to constantly keep re-upping these items. It's enough of a bump to probably make a slight difference in the game, but not so much that you can dominate. So in the end, I don't have a ton of problems with it, but there is a small amount of buying power that can occur in this game. Slot changer is, uh, it's just one of those things uh, that, that functions in game. You can have two power ups on you in game. One is pri in your primary spot, one is your secondary spot. If you wanna switch them, you've gotta use a slot changer. They give you a hundred charges of slot changer out of the right out of the gate i don't really foresee myself ever needing to buy any more slot changers because most of the time i'm just not i'm not such a pro at this game that i'm like exactly what i need right now is to switch to my other power up and use that power up instead of the power up that i have currently selected it just doesn't seem to come up so that's your shop the main way that they monetize is through accessories folks who want to change their body special items in the costume section and upgrades. These are the things you'll end up paying real money for. You can effectively play this game with no money invested. Big thumbs up on that. I like it, I like it, I like it. However, thumbs slightly down, thumbs starting to droop in the downward direction for the ability to buy a bit of power. So there you have it. That is the shop. That is the monetization that they use. Is that right for you? Is that the sort of thing that you can live with? Well, make that decision for yourself and come and play the game. All right, let's get into some action here. We'll take a quick look at the single player. As you can see, it's just something that you work through. It's a good training. I've, I've done a few of them, as you can see. Uh, it really introduces you to uh, many of the concepts that you'll need in the game. And probably I should have done a little bit more of this because as you see, you can actually get some, uh, you know, some decent experience for going through the single player. I should probably sit down and go through the rest of this, but I'm lazy. Ranked matches do not open up until you hit max level, which is 20. We'll take a quick look at multiplayer and then get into a game. When you first start, you will be dumped into the rookie rooms. Once you hit level six, you will no longer be able to go into the rookie rooms. They will start to put you into the advanced rooms. Nobody plays in the advanced rooms. Go to the open room. Here are your games. Server browser, pretty standard stuff if you know anything about anything. Get into a game of your choice, and then go. Ping indicator over here, player indicator here, mode, and map. Nice and simple. All right, guys, let's get into a game and talk a little bit about how we feel about the combat, about the battle.
balance, and uh, just about the fun factor of this game in general. Here we are in the action, three, two, one, let's go. I'm on my Blitzer. As you can see, my lovely horned helmet, my number five jersey here. This is, again, a melee class, a very melee-heavy class, because you get a little leap forward there, but it's not as effective as a ranged attack. And uh, you will start to see how the game plays as we move into it. Here is uh, me going up against a, a slugger, and in this case, the slugger is going to be outclassed at this range. You can notice that the slugger should be trying to get away, but in the end, it doesn't really matter because I get owned by two of his teammates and uh, then get killed. So we'll talk about several things. One of them is, uh, well, here's your respawn. You can change your class when you respawn. If you feel like you're just not getting it with the class, or if you feel you just need to make a change, if you are on a, a level that uh, that sort of leans towards range classes, do it. Here's the other thing I want to talk about, the kiosks. You can see me beating the hell out of this kiosk. That gives a team-wide buff, while at the same time building up my, uh, my item bubble, if you will. You can see over on the sort of upper left-hand side of the screen, there are two bubbles, one big, one small, and uh, the bigger one is partially filled. You'll notice every time I hit something like a trash can or boxes or the kiosk, it starts to fill up. When it fills up completely, I get an item. Those items, excuse me, those items can be very, very effective. They can be game-changing if used in the correct manner. So definitely hit stuff whenever you get the chance, including the kiosk. The kiosk can really change the dimension of a game. And what you're going to see in this game, because point of fact, I suck in this game, but I constantly get the kiosk. And that is a very big, big thing, because that means that my team is going to be constantly buffed. And that is something that, that you really, really want to have. This is something else you want to have, awareness of where your teammates are and a cooperative uh, streak. So when you are engaging, if your teammates are there, help them out. If you see them going after someone who's low health, help them out. If you have low health, run for your teammates. You always want to be thinking in that sort of team uh, mindset. You know, you want to be taking advantage of the fact that you're working together. You can see here, my uh, ranged teammate is just going to trade with a slugger, so I make the jump over and uh, change the, the context of the way that battle's going to occur. The slugger runs away. Ultimately, we don't uh, get the kill. But the point is, my action there was complementary. I had a guy at range who was fighting with another guy at range. I came in and I was the difference maker. We could have potentially worked together to get a kill there. Didn't happen, but it could have. So you will see again here, I'm going to constantly be looking for kiosks and I'm going to constantly be looking for people who are on low health. Oh, but I miss right there. Just a, a horrible, tragic, noobish miss. <laughs> Gotta really, really hate that, but uh, eh, what the hell. You can see, if you look at the upper, well, center of the screen, you will see a blue 6 and a red 5. That is the uh, scores for the respective teams. It is 2-9. You play 2-9. You have 5 minutes. You can see the timer counting down, and you can see me beating ass on another kiosk, giving my team HP recovery. Again, I really don't do very good in this game in the sense of kills, assists, and damage done, but I do very well in the sense that I am constantly making sure that my team has a buff on them. Anytime I can, you can see I'm heading back up now. I'm constantly going back to the top where the kiosks are located, and I'm constantly bashing the hell out of them so that I can make sure that my team is buffed defensively, offensively, health regen, whatever it is. And at the same time, that helps by giving me cool power-ups like this one. Let's throw it down. I know I'm going to throw it down in a second or two, right about now. There it is. Puts a box on the guy, so I boxed the boxer. And uh, when you are boxed, you cannot do anything. Uh, however, he gets the box off of him and beats the shit out of me. So uh, another massive whiff there, but, you know, whiffs will happen. And <laughs> I'm going to head back up trying to uh, redeem myself against this boxer as I notice he's a bit low on health. And we are very close to getting the victory here. At this point, I start to get wailed on, and my instinct immediately turns towards just survive. So at this point, because my health is low, you saw I jump the fence, and I try to go for the defensive power up here. However, I've got someone on my butt, and this boxer starts to take me out, but luckily, my team carries me to a victory. So there you can see how the melee combat goes, how the... Uh, 
how the team aspect goes and how you should be playing the game. You should be playing the game to take advantage of your strengths. In this case, my strength was the fact that uh, I didn't die very often and I was able to concentrate on kiosks. Now we're going to take a look at some ranged. Okay, again, here's another example of taking advantage of your strength. I'm not going to pretend like I'm good at this game, okay guys, but I have at least enough understanding to know that I need to play the classes in an appropriate manner. This is a ranged class. I'm hanging back. I've got no reason to be rushing forward to take on a boxer. The boxer comes to me, however, and I have to beat a hasty retreat. Luckily, I got some backup here, and uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, can I say, can I say, could I say basically, maybe like five more times, right there, basically I fell in lava right there. <clears throat> that was lovely. <laughs> So I'm going to basically respawn here, and basically I'm going to try to get a very basic structure to my basic attack, which is my uh, water bubble thing that I shoot out here. So I'm doing my thing. I'm staying at range. Snipe a kill there. Perfect. That's what I want to do because that's what my class is designed to do. There's no reason for me to be out in the midfield trying to engage. I could push forward a little bit. I should push forward a little bit in this particular scenario, but you know what? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. And I am going to continue to pound on the kiosk, pound on anybody who is stupid enough to come my way, and I'm going to try to get a few kills and help my team. It's 5-5 five, five right now, 6-5, and you're going to notice that the uh, the game changes really quick. I'm going to pick up a kill here and then quickly get another one on that person who was falling off the edge. Somebody gets butt hurt and calls for a vote. Screw them. They're not going to take away our victory. So uh, here's my ranged character experience. This is almost all I've played of a ranged class. So uh, this was one good game that I got, and I'm happy about that. We get the wind. Wonderful. You can see me dance a jig, a fireman's jig. Thrilling wind for the blue team. And uh, let's get some closing thoughts on Brawl Busters. The game is fun. It's fun, most certainly. You may eventually get tired of it. After about maybe 10 levels... It will start to get old. I mean, it's starting to get old for me at level 7. Take a little break. A few days, a week, whatever. Come back to it. You'll return to that sort of childlike vibe, if you will. Because I played this game a lot when it first hit Steam. Got a little tired of it after about 5 levels. Waited a week. Came back. Rediscovered it. And had a blast. So... Brawl Busters is definitely worth your time. Download it. Take a look at it. If you're okay with the way that they monetize the game, maybe you'll decide to become a hardcore player of Brawl Busters. All in all, though, I think it is definitely good for a laugh, if you will. Pop into it on occasion. Play it. Enjoy it. There's definitely skill there if you want to really get into it. Learn your class. Buy the different weapons. Uh, really find out a, a perfect build. That stuff is there. Min-maxing, all that stuff. If you're a fan of that, you can do it in this game. Spend a little bit of money. You can make a really powerful and really effective character. All right, guys, that's going to be it for Brawl Busters. We will be doing micro volts in a day or two. Sorry about the way content came out this week. It was just one of those weeks. Massive internet outage due to crazy thunderstorms in North Carolina over the weekend, which meant I didn't really get to record anything at all. And I just don't have time to record during the week. Finally made the time to record this today. And I will get the micro volts video out to you guys as fast as humanly possible. Check BigDavisCheap.com. April is going to be sort of giveaway month. We're going to spring into action with some spring giveaways. Yeah, that was pretty lame. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave. This has been Brawl Busters. We are continuing Rock Hippo Week. And until next time, take it easy. Brawl busters, brawl busters, brawl busters, brawl busters. I, I want to I keep it keeps sounding like I'm saying bra busters, which is no doubt the name of a porno. In fact, it's, I think I own that porno. Brawl, brawl busters, brawl busters, brawl with an L, not bra, bra brawl busters. All right, I think I got it.